Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today, I'm so excited to share with you my all-time favorite Greek cafe pastry. It is kotopita, little parcels. It's basically roasted chicken that's covered in a bechamel sauce and lots of delicious cheese. And then it's wrapped in a flaky, buttery phyllo baked to perfection. I love these because they're perfect for brunch. They are perfect for like sending to school with your kids or taking to work as a quick lunch. Um, they can be made ahead and that's the best part of it. Let's go over the ingredients so we can start. We're gonna need some olive oil, salt, crushed red pepper flakes, black pepper, a little bit of ground nutmeg, some melted butter, this is unsalted butter, shredded mozzarella, but you can use gouda or whatever your favorite cheese is, some all-purpose flour, a big red bell pepper, an onion, feta cheese, two cloves of garlic, some whole milk, a pound of phyllo pastry. This is the number 10 country style phyllo. It's a little bit thicker cut. And I have some roasted chicken. These are boneless, skinless chicken thighs. This recipe begins with roasted chicken. Now my favorite cut of chicken to roast for this dish and for most dishes is boneless, skinless chicken thighs because they're juicy. You really cannot mess them up. No matter how long you cook them, they still taste super juicy. But you don't have to roast fresh chicken if you don't have it. You can use any leftover chicken or even turkey that you have laying in your refrigerator from one or two nights before. This is a great way to use it as a delicious leftover makeover recipe. But the way I made the chicken, I, I just placed the chicken thighs on a baking tray. I drizzled with a little bit of olive oil, sprinkled some salt and pepper on both sides. Quick, easy, simple. Then I baked them at 450 degrees Fahrenheit until the internal temperature reached 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That takes anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes. Keep an eye on it, take it out, let it come to room temperature. Now we're gonna move on to making the bechamel sauce. The bechamel is creamy goodness. It's so easy to make. It begins with an onion. So finally chop an onion and put it in a saucepan with a little bit of olive oil. Season it with a little bit of salt and cook it over medium heat until the onion is nice and soft. That can, that can take anywhere between six to eight minutes. As soon as the onion is nice and soft, go ahead and add the diced red bell pepper. Red bell pepper is gonna add really nice color and some sweetness. Cook the bell pepper for about three to four minutes over medium heat until it begins to soften. Then at this point, go ahead and stir in the grated garlic and just stir it in until it just warms through about 30 seconds. After that, go ahead and add the all-purpose flour and just continue to mix it and cook it for about one to two minutes until the flour gets nice and toasted. As soon as that's done, go ahead and pour in the milk. The mi once you add the milk, also season it with some salt, pepper, and a little bit of nutmeg for that nice, warm, earthy taste. Keep mixing it until it comes to a boil. The second you see it begin to boil, you're gonna to wanna to take it off of the heat because it is gonna to continue to thicken as it sits. Take it off of the heat and then go ahead and crumble in your creamy feta cheese. Then go ahead and add the chicken, whether you've diced it or shredded it, it's gonna be delicious. I prefer to shred it, but sometimes if the chicken is too hot, if I'm using fresh chicken, I just go ahead and dice it because I don't have patience and I can't wait. So go ahead and add the chicken to the pot along with the mozzarella cheese or whatever cheese you're using. At this point, you could also use Gouda cheese. If you like cheddar, you can use cheddar, but any cheese that melts well is a cheese that you're gonna to wanna to add at this point. Give it a nice mix and taste it. This is a time where you're gonna to wanna to taste it before the eggs go in. If it needs a little bit more salt and pepper, Crushed red pepper flakes are great. Go ahead and add them in at this point, or you could have add the, added them in before too, just like I did. Beat the eggs in a little small bowl, and then go ahead and add some of the hot bechamel mixture into the egg mixture so that we could raise their temperature a little bit. So when they're added to the bechamel sauce, it stays nice and creamy. You do not wanna make scrambled eggs at this point. You want your sauce to be nice and rich and creamy. Go ahead and add the eggs back in, mix it all together and set it aside just like that, your bechamel is ready. Now it's time to form the pies. I have a pound of phyllo pastry thawed and ready to go. Make sure you thaw it out in your refrigerator overnight and then you leave it on the counter in its packaging for at least an hour before you go to work with it. So I'm using country phyllo today. Now country phyllo is much thicker than the regular number four phyllo. You're also gonna have fewer sheets. This one is the number 10, so it's not too thick and it's not too thin, but if you ask me, it is just the right size. 
I'm going to teach you how to make a triangular uh, cotopita, a triangular little chicken filo pie, and a rectangular one. Now the rectangular ones are the ones that they sell in Greece, so let's begin with those. Now take one sheet of this uh, filo dough and you're going to drizzle butter all over the top. Then you're going to take half a cup of filling and you're going to put it into the center. Not into, over the center. You're going to fold over the edges to cover the filo, to cover the filling. Then you're going to drizzle it with more melted butter. Fold the bottom in half to sort of reach the filling. Then cover it and just keep rolling up until you have a nice little package. And keep going until you run out of phyllo and pastry. Next, we're going to make the triangles. For that, we're, we're only going to need one sheet of phyllo. Drizzle some butter down half of the side. Fold over. Then we're going to take a heaping quarter cupful and put it down on the bottom. Then we're going to drizzle a little bit more butter on the phyllo. And then we're going to take one edge and bring it over to, to create a triangle. Sort of press down a little bit. Take the tip and fold it up. Sort of like you're folding a flag shape. Keep folding. Keep going up. This way. And anything left over, you could just tuck it in. And put it on your baking tray that is lined with parchment paper. If you wanted to make little appetizer sized portions, you're going to take the package of phyllo and you're going to cut it into three equal portions. So that way it's about this size strips. I had this in my refrigerator because I work with phyllo often and I love to make little phyllo appetizers. And this is the same country style phyllo. I'm going to take one piece at a time, one long strip. And I'm going to take about a heaping tablespoon of the filling and put it all the way on the bottom. This one is missing some red peppers, so I'm going to put those on top. I'm going to drizzle it with a little bit of butter. And I'm going to fold it up into a triangle just like we did before. You take one tip and you put it up and you fold it flag style. You keep going until you end up with a beautiful little triangle just like that. And there you have it, a little appetizer sized chicken phyllo pie. Once you're done assembling your little phyllo chicken parcels, then go ahead and brush the tops liberally with melted butter. Sprinkle the tops with a little bit of salt. And if you like it, you can go ahead and sprinkle with a little bit of sesame seeds. Very traditional. Now in Greece, we use the white sesame seeds, but this is what I had on hand. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not going to bake them all because we're not going to eat them all today. I'm just going to bake a few. Now the best thing about these is that you can just take them just the way they are, put them in the freezer. Once they're chilled, take them out and wrap them tightly with plastic wrap so that way they don't absorb any um, smells from the freezer. And they will stay fresh in there up to three months. Then you can just take them out and bake them in the oven when you need them until they're nice and golden. They should take anywhere between 30 to 35 minutes when they're not frozen. But if they are frozen, you're going to want to start them off covered with aluminum foil and bake them at 350 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. Then remove the foil and continue to bake them until they're, until they're nice and golden and that should take another 15 to 20 minutes when they are frozen. But since these are not frozen, I'm going to bake them for about 30, 35 minutes or until they're beautifully golden brown and I will show you what they look like as soon as they're done. So the cotopita parcels, the chicken filo parcels are ready. They took about 35 minutes to bake, but you're going to want to keep an eye on them because every oven is different. Just take them out as soon as they get golden brown all around. You want that phyllo to really crisp up nicely in the oven. And the only way it's going to do that is if you let it bake for the amount of time needed. So the, sign, the signal to that is when it's golden brown, it's going to be crispy and it's going to be good. Once that happens, take it out of the oven and let it sit at room temperature for at least 15 minutes. That'll give you just the right amount of time to make my fall cabbage salad, which I will link right here in the card section. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. It tastes fantastic as a side to this kotopita. I think you guys are going to love it. Before I go in and take a bite of this, I want to say that if it is difficult for you to find the country style thicker phyllo, the one that I use for this recipe, you can go ahead and just double up the regular phyllo, which is the number four that's usually so sold at the supermarket. If it doesn't have a number on it, most likely it's the number four because that is the one most commonly used for Greek desserts 
like baklava and things like that. So if you're using the thinner phyllo, just use two or three sheets instead of that one because they are gonna be thin. You're gonna see yourself that the one sheet will not be able to hold that rich, delicious filling. I'm gonna go in and take a bite. Oh God, this is so good. I didn't even finish my bite. That filling, so flavorful, so delicious. I mean, it's so creamy with the bechamel sauce. The onion and the bell pepper and the garlic have just made that sauce taste extra delicious. The chicken is perfect in here. The phyllo is perfectly crisp and buttery and so delicious, and the salt on top. Make sure you don't forget that because it just adds that really nice kick of flavor. I think you guys are gonna definitely love this one. It's gonna become part of your recipe repertoire for sure because the fact that it can be made ahead of time is just a go-to in my book. I love to have these on hand. Go ahead and print the recipe on my website, DemetriusDishes.com. Let me know what you think in the comment section and I will see you all next time. Yes, us.